Hello and welcome to Tea Break Film Reviews. My name's Michelle and today I'm going to be reviewing Borat Subsequent Movie Film. If there is one character that can make sense of this nonsensical time in the world, it's Borat. So hold your mask and hear me out. Before we start, please consider subscribing to help support this channel so we can keep making videos like this. Borat Sukhdiev is a journalist from Kazakhstan who in the previous film traveled to America to document the life there. Due to his shenanigans, Kazakhstan was disgraced and in this film he travels back to America with a gift, his daughter Tuta, in order to repair the relationship. The aim of Sasha Baron Cohen's films is to shed light on the prejudices and hypocrisies present in Western culture, with the particular focus of Borat being on America. He does this by adopting exaggerated, bombastic characters that are a culmination of stereotypes, whether that be the wannabe British rapper Ali G, outgoing gay Austrian Bruno, or the old-fashioned Kazakh journalist Borat. What makes his mockumentary style of filmmaking so captivating is that he is performing his characters in front of normal people and capturing their honest reactions to his ridiculous stunts. If the events and interviews are staged by the production, then what the participants are told to expect is often entirely different from what actually happens. An example of this in Borat 2 is the debutante ball, where fathers and daughters were paid to attend but were not told about the fertility dance that would occur. I don't have time to go through all of the great bamboozles that Sasha Baron Cohen and his team pulled off, but reading about them is definitely one of the best bits about this film, so I would highly recommend everyone do it to get a better appreciation of the lengths these filmmakers went to. What I loved about this film is that it managed to be simultaneously incredibly clever and incredibly stupid. The jokes are not revolutionary. There is toilet humour, blunt racism and sexism, but it is the context in which this derogatory humour is delivered that makes it so brilliant. It is pure satire. When Borat asks the lady at the tanning salon which shade is best for a racist family and she points to a colour, it is not Borat we are judging. Baron Cohen says it perfectly in an interview with the New York Times. He says, satire can humble the powerful and expose the ills of society. That is precisely what makes this film so important, though I fear that the people who actually need to change their behaviour won't see themselves as the problem, unfortunately. Looking at the story behind the satire, I enjoyed the way that Borat's character was developed from a lone journalist in the first film to a father in this one. His daughter is not only a device within the story, but an important secondary protagonist, played by Maria Bakalova. Baron Cohen has had his entire career to perfect the art of performing to strangers, whilst staying in character during these absolutely ridiculous scenes, but Bakalova, fresh out of drama school, had incredibly difficult shoes to fill. She is put in embarrassing, exposing, and sometimes sickening situations, but she absolutely steps up to the challenge and fits in perfectly alongside Cohen. These actors may be playing funny, dim-witted characters, but that doesn't mean they shouldn't be taken seriously. The entire success of this film relies on them being able to improvise whatever happens, and that is not a talent that every actor can sustain for so long. I can't imagine being in some of these situations and not cracking up. I mean, Jim and Jerry's conspiracy theories? Oh my god, I can't picture how Cohen managed to keep a straight face for so long. On the other side of the spectrum of people that we meet during this film, there is the real-life professional babysitter, Janice Jones. Knowing that she was just being herself provides a little glimmer of hope in all the stupidity. A nice story about her is that her church's pastor set up a GoFundMe page when she was laid off work because of COVID. He helped raise $170,000 for Janice. I love stories like this because it really goes to show that even the silliest of films can lead to the most unexpected and wonderful things. 
In terms of cinematography, I would normally comment on how creative the visuals are, but what is most impressive about it here is how they manage to pull off these scenes with a minimal setup. They couldn't have a DOP with a steady cam and rocking an Ari Alexa having a focus puller following them around the CPAC conference, for example. They would have stuck out like a sore thumb. The crew members had to be part of the act, and without them we would not have been able to even see any of the stunts, so a lot of kudos goes to them. Now what's interesting about my experience of the film specifically is that Bakalova is speaking in Bulgarian, which I am fluent in. This meant that in some cases I knew when the subtitles were not what she actually said, which was a little distracting. In other cases what she actually said I found far funnier than the subtitles. But it was a strange experience, and I initially found it quite confusing why so many of the characters who were supposedly from Kazakhstan were all speaking different languages. Borat is speaking Hebrew, Bokolova with her Bulgarian, in the 2006 film Borat's sidekick was speaking Armenian, and in this film the premiere is speaking Romanian. At first I didn't understand why they were doing this, but reading about it, it seems that the point being made was that to an American audience, foreign is foreign, it all sounds the same. It is a subtle and clever commentary on ignorance, and it only makes me appreciate this film even more. But elaborate social commentary aside, this film is downright entertaining. It delivers its comedy in much the same way as something like American Pie does. When Jim is making love to the pie and his parents arrive home, the audience is absolutely panicking with him. Similarly, when Tudor and Borat visit the women's health clinic and manage to imply incest and abortion to this conservative doctor, then the audience is in cringe mode with him. It also has good pace, moving the central story along to organically end up at the big ticket stunts without having them feel thrown in. At 95 minutes long, you can trust that this film will not waste your time with pointless scenes. Every moment is well chosen to serve the satire and the story. None of us can escape the topic of COVID in our daily lives at the moment, and it is a very tricky topic to make lighthearted. But Borat 2 manages. It takes on a conspiracy theory of its own, and the silliness of it all really is a nice break from thinking about the inconsiderate idiots breaking lockdowns and the exhausted medical workers. Watching this film, you can smile at least a little bit. Borat's subsequent movie film is easy to dismiss, but under the silly facade, it is an eye-opening exploration of American society and culture that does not feel like a lecture, but a well-balanced documentation of the world we live in now, delivered by a couple of very ballsy actors. Thank you for watching. Please like this video if you enjoyed it, subscribe and hit the bell icon if you want to see more videos, and comment with your thoughts on the topic. What are your favourite satires? For more film content, feel free to follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Letterboxd. Links in the description. Otherwise, this has been Tea Break Film Reviews, my name's Michelle, and I hope your day is very nice.